daily maintenance. Um, I'm going to make a few little videos. This is my very first ukulele that I ever bought. It's an Ibanez uh, UKC 10. Um, it cost probably about £50 at the time. I knew nothing about buying ukuleles. This was going back about seven years ago. I knew I wanted a concert. Um, other than that, I recognised the name Ibanez because um, I'd had a few bass guitars, so I thought, give them a go. Um, none the wiser, really, to be honest. When I really started to play, um, I thought it was an okay ukulele. I didn't realise it had sharp frets or the strings were dreadful or it sounded not very good. Um, and then I got more ukuleles and this one has sort of been put to the side. So I thought, right, well, I'll give it a bit of a clean up. Um, change the strings on it, sort the sharp frets out, see where that takes us and I thought well I'll make some videos because it may help somebody else in a similar position. Right so the, the tools and the bits and pieces I've got ready before I start, who knows I might need other things as we go. Um, I've got my ukulele cleaner um, and a fret board conditioner. Um, I've got some little files just in case I need to move the nut or anything. Um, I'm pretty sure the action is okay on this one, but I'll show you how to measure the action on the strings. Um, I've got my sanding block and my little um, stone file for just getting rid of the sharp edges on the frets. I've got my cloths ready, I've got my strings, I've got my um, tuner and I've got my um, music nomad um, octopus is it general tool for doing all sorts of bits so I think I'm already um, I'm not sure what I'm going to end up doing but um, it'll be fun finding out so as you can see it's not the prettiest of ukuleles it's actually quite a plain looking one um, it is dusty I don't know if you'll be able to See, if I go like that, all right, it really is not very clean at all. Um, I can see bits of dust on it as well. The fingerboard looks dusty. It doesn't look particularly dry, um, but I will put some conditioner on it. Um, we live in quite a humid part of the world, so we don't suffer too much with that. These are the original strings. As I said, I knew no better when I started, and I haven't really played this uke for quite a long time. Um, just looking at the other end for a minute, if I hold that in quite closely, it's taken a little bit of a batter in. Um, some of the logo is missing on the top. There you are, look at that, that's awful. Look at the dust on that. Um, the logo, part of the logo is missing. Um, I tried one of those sort of clamps for your phone um, on it a, a while ago. Luckily, I tried it on this one because it just took chunks of the top off. Um, so I'll take the strings off in a moment, um, show you how to do the frets. All right, they, they're not super sharp, but they are slightly annoying, okay? Um, and then we'll see where we go from there. Right, so the first job I'm gonna do is get these strings off. I'm gonna loose them off, loosen them off a little bit with my Joom Smart Tuner, hardcore tuner, okay? Um, you haven't got to be too careful. Yes, if you want to keep the strings and put them back on afterwards, be more careful, okay? But these strings, I'm not intending to use them again. So I'm just loosening them off. There they are. See how much quicker it is. Helps if you pluck the right one. There we go. Okay, so I've just loosened them off enough now. So, in theory, I should just be able to pull them over. Hang on, let me go a little bit more. There we go. I'm just doing it enough so that I can actually pull it up over the top. There we go. And in fact, there we are, because it's a tied knot on the end. All right, for that one. Um, it just came out the other end. Okay, so that's the first string done. Do the same to the others. There you are, that one's already loose enough to come over. There we go. 
and I'll have to do this one a bit more. So this is on manual mode at the minute, so I'm just going down so it's loosening the string off. It's a brilliant tuner if you've got a lot of ukulele to tune. Right, there we go. So if I pull this back up now, so you can see a bit more of the ukulele, I'm just pulling these out of the slot because they've got their knots on them. There we are, there's a knotted one. Our E string and there we are. The A string fell on the floor. So, strings removed. No, you're not cracking up. I have changed my ukulele for a minute. Bit of a schoolboy error. I wanted to show you how to measure the action before I showed you the next thing on the Ibanez uke. This is a string action ruler. All right, it's got all sorts of different measurements on it. Um, I'm gonna be using this bottom gauge, uh, gauge today. Um, and that's going to tell me the height of the strings. So all you do, and these are cheap as chips, they're really cheap, eBay, um, Amazon, ukulele shops, all right? I sit this, my 12th fret, where my whale is, and I sit this there, and then I look to see where the strings are on the gauge, all right? Um, so all I'm going to do, I like to have my strings under three mil, 2.5 to 2.75 millimeters is I'm happy with that so I'm looking there's my 12th fret that one so I'll start really low and go well yeah it's obviously higher than that and I would say this one's about 2.5 to 2.75 all right so that's how you measure your string action on your ukulele Right, it'll make sense now why I swapped ukuleles out. So, we've got the ukulele, no strings. If the action of the strings was too high, in other words, it's too uh, difficult to press down on the strings all the time, you need to alter this bit. This is called the saddle, all right? Now, I've only just taken the strings off this for the first time, but generally, saddles work like this. They are held in by the string. So, keep your fingers crossed, this works. I should, if I pull gently, yeah, it's moving straight away. Can you see? This is just coming out of its slot, all right? So there's a slot there that holds this saddle. Now, I'm being very careful to remember which way round it goes. I don't wanna swap it over, all right? So, if my action was too high, and the next time I have a uke with an action too high, I, I'll show you properly, but you'd get your block of sanding. This is probably a little bit too um, fine to do this job, but this is how you do it. I'm holding it a particular way. Right, okay. So all you do is get your saddle and you go back and forth on that until you take it down however low for your action. All right, it's easy enough to do. I have done it on ukuleles, but I haven't got one at the minute that needs it. So I'm gonna put my saddle back in place. All I'm gonna do is slot it across and I'll probably take it out again when I'm doing a bit of cleaning later, but it's it's nice and simple. They're meant to come out to be adjusted. All right, so all I'm gonna do now is put it back in, same way I took it out. There we are, and the saddle's back in place now. Right, the next job I'm gonna do before I start to give it a clean and things um, is just sort these frets out a little bit. Okay, they're not super sharp. I have felt far worse. Uh, if I take something like my uh, cleaning brush, all right, and just go, it's not massive, all right, but there is a little bit of marking going on in there on the plastic, all right? So I'm just going to very, very finely um, rub over it a couple of times. I wouldn't do this, what I'm about to do, to a really expensive uh, ukulele. I would either tape it all up, all right, and make sure it's everything is covered, or I would probably take it into a shop to have it done properly, all right? But this isn't the cheapest of ukuleles, and to be honest, the more expensive the ukulele, the less I would expect sharp frets anyway. All right, sharp frets can happen for a number of reasons. It can be um, poor quality 
of um, workmanship. So when you buy it, it's got sharp frets, which is what this one had. Um, it could be because your fingerboard dries out, your fretboard dries out, and so therefore the wood shrinks. That can sometimes cause it, but in this case, it was just poor workmanship. Right, so as I said, I'm not, I'm not gonna tape this up today, all right? Mainly because it doesn't need too much work doing to it. Um, sometimes I use one of these, which is um, a sanding block, one of these foam ones. Sometimes I use one of these, which is a sort of grinding stone file, all right? Depending how much needs do into it. Um, this one is going to be a really light job, all right? So I'm not going to do too much. It's always better to do a little bit and then a little bit more and then a little bit more rather than going something straight away, going too far and damaging. Okay, so I'm going to use, there isn't a lot to come off, so I don't need the, uh, the stone file. I'm literally going to pull this at the very end for a minute so I've got a little space and just go like that. I'm being really, really light. Okay, now on this end bit, obviously I don't want to um, damage the wood. So I'm just looking for something uh, nice to hand. All right, just literally a bit of paper there, just to cover. Okay, as I said, this is a quick job I'm doing at the minute. So I'm just going, so I'm not touching the actual wood of the instrument, I'm just very lightly hitting the frets. I'll do it this side as well. Okay, you don't need to do much. There we are. And then we're away from the body. So I'm just gonna go up. I'm gonna move the neck holder. I'm being careful a minute not to touch this and I'm gonna show you why in a second. All right, so just so I can do these last few frets up here. As I said, I'm not doing much to it at all. Okay. Right, let's see in a moment how that feels. Right, I've zoomed in. I just said we'll see in a moment how that feels. Can you see all those tiny um, sparkly bits all right on the end <coughs> excuse me of the fingerboard all right they are tiny tiny particles of metal off the fretboard so don't go rubbing your fingers along the fretboard until you've cleaned those bits of metal off okay so all i'm going to do is i've got a very slightly damp cloth um, and I'm just going to lightly run it along the fingerboard, okay? So I'll do this lower section so you can see it properly. So there we go. I'm just going to clean off all these little particles that have just come off there. All right, and then I shall rinse this out, all right, um, and do the next section. Right, so I'm just going to wipe off the rest of these bits. Okay. You can see the tiny little bits left on there because they sort of sparkle a little bit. And don't worry too much about making the fingerboard wet because we're going to be putting some conditioner on that shortly, but I will dry it off as well. But a little bit of water isn't going to harm your fretboard. Now that's looking pretty good. I can't see any little shiny things. I'm just going to dry it off now before I do the finger test. Right, you might have noticed with a, with a towel, I'm going across um, so I don't get bits of towel stuck. Right. 
Before I go running my finger, I'm just going to do another little test with my uh, plastic brush to see if that's any better. Certainly less marks on that, so the finger test now because there hopefully isn't any little bits of metal left. All right, that does feel much better. All right, as I said, it wasn't the worst um, sharp frets that I felt, but there was no harm in doing it, and now they are much, much smoother. So that's the end of part one of maintenance of our ukuleles. We've covered taking the strings off. Uh, we've looked at measuring the action height at the 12th fret. Um, and we've taken away those nasty sharp frets. Okay, uh, part two, we shall cover um, cleaning it, giving it a good dust, getting rid of the main bits of grime and how to condition your fretboard. As always, if you've got a comment or a question, leave it below. Give us a like if you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe and look out for part two. Thank you for watching.